if you are watching me from Ninja or you are watching me from uh, Mali or Burkina Faso, it is not true that uh, the Echo was as a body, they have not uh, supported you in the fight against uh, the terrorists, okay? Maybe the West, but when it comes to the West Africa, Nigeria has been giving money, even though they probably they were still in it, okay? In, on record, Nigeria has been giving money towards a regional security, this security, that. And I'm talking about billions of uh, Nigeria money. Okay? Just so you know that. So that statement of nothing at all at all is not true. Okay? However, in context, right, they said they've not really benefited from money, anything. Even though they use part of Nigeria money to build the Nigeria Republic. I mean, those who are in Nigeria Republic can confess to that. But again, they said it's nothing. Now, they want to be on their own. If cut off the electricity, fine. Great. Now, they are making good money. So, when uh, this whole thing started, it was like it will only be a matter of weeks before the people of Ninja will turn against these people, especially in Ninja Republic. It will be a matter of days or weeks. Once they try, once Nigeria showed them Shege now, Nigeria couldn't show anybody any Shege because Nigeria itself is seeing Shege. Bansa, that is a bon Shege, Shege's senior brother. Bansa. So instead of uh, there are people to turn on them, they just seems to support them because this idea seems to be freedom for them. Now, they have access to more money than they've ever been, I mean, they've ever had access to. Instead of Tifnumbu to also open up diplomatic conversation, diplomatic uh, route, where they can begin to look into other things of interest, especially this area of insecurity, terrorism, Tifnumbu continued to dance to the West. And just a few days ago, Anthony Blinken was in Nigeria. God knows what they told him. You remember when they were planning to kidnap the arrested president? And that got leaked to them in Ninja. Yes. Tifnumbu agreed with France and the rest of whoever is talking to him. Eh? They agreed to put together a team that will invade wherever they are keeping Bazoon and they will take him out. Now, when Bazoon is in exile, Bazoon will be given all this uh, like president in exile. It will, be, uh, it will be recognized as the Ninja president. Tifnumbu was plotting that and that got leaked and they told them we know your plan, oh, and we have no plan of trying to even fight you. But we have given orders and directive to those who are guiding Bazoom. If they suspect, for any reason, if they suspect any strange movement around them, they should kill Bazoom and kill his entire family. And that's the order. I think that was what pushed them back. Okay? But somehow, somehow, they managed to negotiate the release of Bazoom's wife and Bazoom's, uh, I think Bazoom's son or something. They shall release part of his family. They still kept Bazoom. Now, Bazoom is still there. They plot all the ideas brought by Tifnumbu. None of them could be executed without leading to Nigeria's uh, serious disgrace. But they were making pronouncements. So the soldiers, they mobilized to Shokoto. They had to tell them to go back to where they came from. They had 25,000 soldiers ready to mobilize, to, uh, to invade the Ninja Republic, but they do not have 25,000 soldiers with weapons of war to invade Sambisa and clean the place out of, of uh, the terrorists. Their directive, the order is not covering that. They will do that. They will send our people to their death in another country eh? just to protect the interest of those who are holding Tifnumbu's uh, compromise. Come be like, say, they, they have a Tifnumbu's uh, note. You know that one where we say that somebody get your note, note picture. Eh? All the ones that you actually show, all the Maracana, everything from, uh, you know what I mean? And then somebody has all of that and says, by tomorrow, 7 a.m., I am going to release all those things. First, I'm going to send them to your husband. Then I'm going to send it to your children. And I'm going to send it to their friends. And I'm going to send it to your boss. 
and I'm going to then post it on Facebook if you don't give me 10 million naira. You know that kind of blackmail. It can't be like, say, that's exactly what they have on Tifnumbu. He's not consulting anyone. The National Assembly told him, please don't go to Ninja. Why would you try to declare war on a country without consulting with your National Assembly? He didn't. And later, they can say, okay, uh, uh, they have settled it. Uh, so may everybody calm down. So it's not, they are now going to use diplomacy. You want to use diplomacy to kidnap the, the criminals that they are, the criminal they jailed in their country to satisfy who? They were going to bring Bazoom to Nigeria. They are going to give him a house in Nigeria, make him appear like a president. They will give him all the convoy cars, all of that stuff. Now, Bazoom will be given his own private jet so that Bazoom can fly to America and apply, uh, appear in America and say, I am still the president. America, please help me. They overthrew me. I mean, they overthrew me in uh, Ninja. They wanted to use Bazoon to push that agenda, and it didn't work. So now, Nigeria have lost it all with these guys, and their people are happy for it. It's like a freedom. I have never been to Nigeria Republic, but honestly speaking, eh? It's just like an extension of another Nigeria. I won't lie to you. I mean, it's easier to kind of feel that way. It was like a freedom. I'll show you. Hey! Okay. I told you it's like the northern Nigeria, right? Here is another one. The way they took the news, like finally, we can't order ourselves about this. We are now like enemy nations to all these places. Tifunbu became the chairman of ECOWAS. Seven months after that, ECOWAS done pieces. Tifunbu became the president of Nigeria in eight months, right? The destruction did by uh, Bokwari in eight years only took Tifunbu eight months. It destroyed the Naira. It kind of uh, further leg uh, legalized the corruption. All this in eight months to Nigeria national greed itself has kind of uh, dwindled as well, right? I mean, like, what is it they haven't done? Terrorism has skyrocketed. In fact, they also already nationalized the ransom payment. Have you not noticed, right? So, person enter ECOWAS, tear ECOWAS, tear ECOWAS apart. And you have no idea what is still going to tear apart. Back to Ninja. See how they receive the news. <laughs>
Uh, the people with Tifnubu won't go. This is the people that uh, Tifnubu decided to to break everything uh, that is uh, on his way. Unfortunately, it is the liberation. It's like uh, the second uh, independence for them. Even though it's a case of you know uh, from one. Uh, uh, sort of uh, from one chance to another because somehow they have all their strength with Russia now. Right now, you see all these countries, they have unhindered access to Russia, even though some of them are to share some uh, port with other West African countries. Well, with Russia, eh, they are getting all the supplies they could get, starting with their grains, eh, weapons trainings and then uh, even money and all of that and in return eh, Russia is trying to continue to poke through the ass of uh, America and uh, NATO in Africa yes we are going to have our own base there chase all of them away oh you are chasing chasing us away for Russia yes we are Russia is not going to buy our uh, what do you call it uh, What's that thing? Titanium, a big long pay. What's that thing again? Uh, lithium, rather, yeah. Uh, you know, Russia is not going to buy our lithium. Uh, it's not going to buy all these resources as if to say they are like a giveaway or uh, something you just pick up uh, from the ground. Even though if they are going to, uh, you know, take advantage of us, indeed they are offering us far better than what you've ever offered us. Uranium, God bless you. There are many. They've got lithium for battery. They've got uranium. And that uranium in particular, which is very, very, very useful uh, when you are building a nuclear reactor, atomic bomb. Eh? So you get shy anyway. Now they buy them with standard prices. The money comes straight to them. Where they have to like uh, exchange uh, Instead of taking money, exchange them for other things that they need. They were getting all those things with respect. You have no respect for us. Even right now, after stealing from us uh, for over 50 years, right? These days, all of our assets in France and other places, you call them sanctions. But you've taken them. You are going to keep them for yourself. You're not going to give them back to us. But you are sanctioning us and all of that stuff. Sure you get. So it will never be compared to how they have been treated for the last 50 years. And they are okay with that, I've been told. But to this guy, how many of you remember this guy during the uh, uh, religious uh, Olympic Muslim Muslim tickets? Eh? That later turned to tribal uh, Champions League, a be ethnic Champions League, where all of those bigots, eh? they are, you know, they are award winning uh, bigot professionals or professional bigots. Do you remember this guy? His name is uh, uh, Garbage uh, something. I'm trying to kind of... Uh, uh, anyway, I'll show you his face. <laughs> I want you to guess it. I'm trying to give you Garbage. Eh? Okay, don't worry. His own reaction is that. Even though we are northerner... Not, anyway, watch. Mali... Burkina Faso and Niger are withdrawing their membership from ECOWAS with immediate effect. I think I saw the joint statement and I went through the joint statement. And I can see that some of the Africans, especially the West African community, are agitated and are angry about this move. Um, it may appear to be a very bad thing, you know, now, but I think it is somehow a good thing in disguise because this is a community that is supposed to be an economically integrated community economic community don't forget economic community of west african states 
So it was supposed to be an economically integrated unit. In all sincerity and to all intent and purposes, are we really economically integrated? Is Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso, and all other 14 West African countries actually economically integrated? We don't share common currency. We don't share common market. We don't share even our borders are strongly guarded against one another. So I think the idea behind the creation of ECOWAS is actually expired. We are supposed to re-engineer a new united structure that will integrate our politics, our economies, and our security together. That is how you get an effective united entities to be able to confront the threat against them and to unite and grow economically. Look at what NATO has done, and look at what BRICS currently is doing, and look at Shanghai a Cooperation Organization, what China is doing. Look at the Asian states, what they are doing. They are trying to integrate everything together, the economics, the political, and the security together. So that is the way you can create a basket that will be beneficial to the ordinary people that are living in these communities. But a situation whereby you have economical community of West African states, I have to travel to, to Niger, I have to change currency. I'm going to Burkina Faso, I need a SEFA. I'm going to uh, uh, the Benin Republic, I need a SEFA. And some of the things, we don't speak common language. You know, even though we share common heritage, we share common background, we share common histories, we have centuries of relationships that built us together. But unfortunately, we share almost everything in a disintegrated way. So I believe somehow the equals itself has some uh, a, a kind of a colonial uh, mentality behind this creation. And the most important thing is to re-engineer the equals. So it's not a bad deal for the leadership of ECOWAS now to re-engineer, to reorganize a new structure that will bring about a lasting legacy by the current leadership. I know that our country is now leading ECOWAS with the president as the as the leader of ECOWAS, our president Bola Ahmed Tinibu. It's an opportunity for the president to reorganize Africa in the shape that will turn into our realities, that will enable us to be able to confront our threats and unite our economy so that we can grow, expand, and become much more stable as a COAS or economic community in within, uh, or, or, or West African states. Because the whole idea behind the economic integration has failed. So I think uh, we just need to recreate the, the structure, re-engineer a new framework that will bring both our economics, our security, in our political interests together so that we can, uh, as a United uh, States, push forward for a bigger, better, more prosperous, and more protected nations. New Zans Lelegi. New Zans Lelegi. That is uh, the Tifnumbu that is going to come and reorganize Ekowasi, <laughs> Okonoayirada. And it started sounding like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's making sense. That's making sense. Uh, oh, dear. It's all just what salad, bullshit, nonsense, okay? But they will sound like, oh, that's sensible. You, you, are, you, are you that daft to first deny the, uh, what do you call it, the third party interest in all of this? Do you think things just, they just woke up one morning and they just like, okay, yeah, that's it. No. There are third parties' interests here playing out. And none of this is in the interest of the people of these uh, countries. And the person behind this, oh, that triggers, finally triggers this final destruction or breakup of faith, even though a lot of people have said that. What exactly is the purpose of ECOWAS, by the way? You know what I mean? Like, when you have uh, the Nigerian, uh, I mean, when you have the ECOWAS passport, you are supposed to go to all those countries anywhere you want, like, just like that, like the Europeans. But that's actually not what it is in real sense of it. Nigeria, the biggest, the giant of Africa or giant of West Africa. Who have the largest population, by the way, right? Your passport is shite. Eh? 
not even Burkina Faso, not even the uh, Benin Republic respect it. You can't flaunt it like you know what I mean. Like oh Benin, you are Koshi Danujo. Where's that? So there is actually no foreign policy of Nigeria that sort of uh, gives us uh, any kind of preferential treatment in Africa. There is none. So you know, like these people, you have never really like existed or something like that, right? However, now being used as a tool to mobilize the region against others, other countries because of the interest of uh, the the West. I mean, you cannot rule, I mean, you cannot ignore that. So now asking the same person who actually initiated that to come together, we need to come together, we need to re strategize what, what exactly? There's something called treaties. Countries respect countries and they respect their sovereignty. And when they are when they have treaties together, these uh, bilateral uh, bilateral treaties, right? They are like uh, the bond, the, the, the awards. We will never do this against you. You will never do this against us too. Wherever there is uh, anything that is coming against uh, us, you will do everything to protect uh, to protect us if you are aware of it. We will do everything to protect you if something is coming against your country. Those are the treaties like the bond. They are between countries. They are not presidents. These are not treaties between presidents. Yeah. They are between countries. They outlive president. They outlive governments. And if you terminate them simply because your friends in the West are telling you that, you don't have no soldiers to defend your country. Now you have enough soldiers to invade another country. So how do you then come back and say, yeah, we want to reorganize. Reorganize what? Eh? And he says something about language. He says something about uh, this. In Europe, eh? They don't speak the same language. And that is why they are countries. Do you understand? Eh? Even though the languages you are sort of we are speaking in these West African countries are also from Europe. French, Portuguese, English. Abi? And I think some no, there's no German speakers in West Africa. I don't think so. But I'm just saying in Europe. If you go from Germany, you will know this is Germany. They are speaking German. When you go to France, these are French people. They are speaking French. When you go to Britain, you see these are English or oh, yeah, British. They are speaking English. It's the same thing when you now say, okay, these are the Burkina Fasos. They are speaking French. These are Malians. They are speaking French. These are Chadians. They are speaking French. These are Beninois. They are speaking French. Oh, here is here are Ghanaians. They are speaking English. Okay. So these are Nigerians, they are speaking English. Okay. Oh, these are Cameroonians, they are speaking French. Now, when you get to those borders, right, you know the language they speak. And in a way, eh, they also know that uh, those who come to their country speak other languages that they must also, so they must help them when they, to navigate through their country. Now, these treaties are to respect all of that. One of the things that actually make treaties work is when you have a uh, security. That's so crucial. And insecurity has no language. There is no language. Uh, you know what I mean? That they will say, oh, this is the language of uh, the, the criminals. Crime has no language. It just has the people who carries them out. And you get to punish them according to their crimes. That's why you have governments, Abi. So all these things were kind of sorted. Like those guys said, since 1975, 49 years ago, respect our sovereignty respect what we do in our country and listen if there is a change of government in our country and as a i mean as a diplomatic uh, what do you call it as diplomatic uh, powers the least you can do is to offer support and guide not to threaten them when you threaten them, you threaten their country. When you cut off their electricity, you declare war on their country. You can't turn around and say, why are they doing this? You've cut off all the ties. Are you going to now come back and say, okay, we're going to put your electricity back. Oh, we're going to let you continue what you are doing. Now, we're not going to, like, what should have been done? And that's why somebody said they should remove Tifnumbu. And another person was like, 
you think that's not uh, that's actually really possible in what Nigeria has become? It's not possible, of course. Or removing Tifnubu may not be true impeachment. See this guy. So why would you think that the possibility of an impeachment <clears throat> exists at all for the president before well, 2020? Well, I, I, I have to be hopeful that the National Assembly members will do what is right for Nigeria. And what is right for Nigeria is that this administration cannot stand. The rate of insecurity, <laughs> the rate at which the economy is going, all the policies that this, uh, this president is taking. You know, the president we have is not the man that we all thought he was. This is not Bola Metinubu of 10, 15 years ago. This man is gone senile. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's destroyed the economy and the whole country is going down. If you don't see that, you see, the National Assembly is the key. I know it's a tall order to expect them to impeach him. But for the sake of survival of this country, this man must either go or we have a review of the 1999 Constitution. The National Assembly has a lot to think about for the sake of Nigeria. They don't go there just because they are in a political party. They're not representing a party when they go there. They're representing the people, the interest of the people. If they take the interest of the people to heart, they will think about either putting this guy in order or getting him impeached. Impeached because it seems to me all his appointments are personal appointments. They're not helping the country. He himself doesn't know what he's doing. The economy is gone. Now, the dollar to the Naira is, I think, 1,400. The cost of petrol, companies are folding up, unemployment is up. The country is in serious trouble. Something drastic must happen. That's never happened before. We never impeached the president before, I don't think. This will be the first time, because this is the first time we're having the kind of disastrous administration in the history of Nigeria. So why would you think that the... Hello, Nigerians. This is just the beginning. Fellow Nigerians, this is just the beginning. Yes, it is. Now, I am not sort of uh, really happy uh, being the one to remind you of this almost every evening. I'm not really happy. But you need to be reminded every minute the danger and the disaster that Ifnumbu and his gang represent so that when you for any reason, encounter those. You are not going to blame it on village people. Hmm. Somebody sent me a message and said, Ha! Mayegun! Something has happened to Nigeria. And from what you have been saying, that it is still going to get worse. I am worried. I am worried. I am actually worried. I said, what happened? Why are you so alarmed suddenly? And he was like, Baba, a professor in 2011 was being paid 425,000 Naira salary. Hmm? And back then, with the exchange rate of 155 Naira, a professor in Nigeria was earning over 2,000 six hundred and fifty naira i mean sorry fifty dollars converted said mayogu fast forward to 13 years after this january the take-home pay for a professor in nigeria is after tax so three hundred and twenty thousand naira and mayogu do you know what that is in dollars? I said, what? I said, $250. As an academia, 
who has been in the academic sector for 20 years, 30 years, nearing your retirement. And here you are. From $2,600 the devaluation and the destruction of Nigeria has affected you so much that the value of your take-home today is less than $300. A professor, university, who has been there, I'm not talking about somebody who joined now. I am talking about those who have been there for years. Do you see that depreciation? Yeah, exactly, that's what they have done to you. $250. From $2,600. That is the way to put it. And I was like, I did a program yesterday that I was talking about the effect of uh, the devaluation and all of that. I was like, no, 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 no. I saw that. My, I saw it. But it never hit me that much when you were saying it until I saw something. And somehow, somehow, all you said started hitting me. Started hitting me. Especially when you said it is going to get worse. Because it is. It will. I know they are telling you that it will first get worse, then it's going to get better. I mean, if things are going to get worse, it will now get better. Of course, that is possible. But that means, number one, you must stop that thing that you were doing. That created the hardship in the first place. Now, when you stop that eh, and you begin to really put investment in the areas that are productive, right? So gradually, gradually, it will begin to come down. Since then, bond you, anything will go up in Nigeria ever come down? I don't know how old you are. Even those of you who are in Domi generation, hmm? from inside Bele, Unadan, they shout up Nepa. Some of you today, you have, you have your own children. You are parents today. Your children are still shouting that up, Nepa. Talk to me. Since you were born, since you have, uh, since, uh, uh, since I was born now that I am older. I, sh I don't know. I can't remember that song, but something came to my head. I couldn't put it together. Since you were born, has anything, has anything gone up in Nigeria? Because of something, and then they begin to go down. Me, I have witnessed that in the UK. UK. <laughs> UK. Kilo special by UK, you know, everything, everything. Do you, you think you are special? Oh, my, I am special. I mean, uh, at least I did not, I did not uh, contribute. To where I was to be born. That's why I found myself in Nigeria. Okay. But after 28 years of my life. In Nigeria. Then I found myself in another place. Okay. Then I now realized that. All of the hardship they unleashed on us. They were all completely intentional. Okay. And so, I have experienced things that the Nigeria criminal leaders have left in your dream world. It shouldn't be like that, though. It is not my fault, though. Maybe it is not even your own fault, too. Apart from those of you who are enablers yourselves, right? It may, it may not be your fault. But since I enter UK, UK, eh, I kind of don't have to pray for electricity to, you know, to, to be on. I do not have to worry about uh, paying for my health care, per se, or that of my family. I could possibly... Never have to worry again about uh, the education of my own uh, children. That's some grace. So, like, you know what I mean? You get what I mean, right? And also, in the UK, I have seen things gone up and they came back down. 
things like inflation and the price goes up. Inflation comes down and the price comes down. Eh? Inflation go left, the price go right. Inflation go left, I mean right, the price go left. I have witnessed a lot. And wherever inflation was too stubborn, the economists in the UK who run it, they will make sure that our income, our take-home pay, actually takes us home. Our incomes always match whatever madness inflation want to bring. So I've seen that. I've experienced it. But since then, born you. Now that you are grown older, have you ever seen the price comes down in Nigeria before in your life? Have you ever seen it? No. You're going to get used to it. Yes, you are. Now, to make it worse, they are not doing anything at all eh? to stop the bleeding. You know when somebody is bleeding before you bleed to death? Hmm? They will say, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Tighten the, put pressure, put pressure on the wound. Put pressure on the wound to stop the bleeding. Nigeria has been hemorrhaging. Nigeria has been having internal bleeding. From my own experience, any person will get internal bleeding. If it is not addressed the quickly, Kosikuto fast ito. That's why some of us can go to sleep and wake up and say, with guns on our head. So yeah, I repeat it that uh, that Nigeria is going to break up. Say, oh my break up, sir. Are you mad? We have gone on your head, you. We are going to kill you. I say, Kuku kill me. Abi, kill my vessel. Nigeria is going to break up at some point because Nigeria has been suffering internal bleeding, self inflicted, greed influenced internal bleeding economically and humanly nigerians are like games on the field for the terrorists to hunt it's like the terrorists in nigeria are like i'm gonna go and go and learn how to shoot then they just pick up the guns and they walk into a village sell some of uh, the houses are blazed and when people started running the you know the vulnerable people when they start running out of their houses running to safety then these guys will start shooting them car 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 Bunch of cowards. Share you guys. So that's what, uh, to me, uh, that is what uh, the, the agreed and all of that has kind of uh, uh, brought upon Nigeria. And eventually, internal bleeding will lead to the death of Nigeria. And that's why we're saying you can stop the bleeding. Save the lives. Before they bleed all of us to death. Before our children also suffer the same fate. Would you please use this, your own little uh, freedom? That you currently still have to add your voice to try and stop what is coming these guys are not doing anything to make all of this go away they were supposed to have announced the increment in the price of petroleum you were supposed to have started buying petrol at 800 naira or 900 naira by now you see this issue of uh, now that dollar to naira seems to be like they would never, they would never meet together again. Kind of, eh? You will think, maybe, eh, maybe. Once well, some of you have all these ideas, and eh, we need to stop. Can you come? Eh, the president need to stop the. the can it, are you mad, Dini? All these things you are telling them to stop. They are intentional stuff. They are those who are doing them. Che, you get. None of these things you are seeing is happening without the eye. They are approver. Now you, they try to give them the benefit of the doubt and say, maybe if the president knows about it, show them he knows about it. When you appoint people to handle some things, you know, when you appointed your trusted uh, criminals to handle some strategic uh, stuffs, right? No matter how valuable those institutions are or supposedly to be to the people, they will never serve the people because intentionally they are to be compromised. Whatever they do, Whatever is happening around them, you may be thinking, eh, why can't we just try and do? Why can't we just try and do? Can you come with it? Show them near me. All the models you are talking about will never make them rich from your stolen money. So they won't do them. You can speak all the grammars. They, know, they do know what they are doing. Since the, all they are doing is to take and take and take, which is the plan, 
you waiting for them to now say, we have invested in Kininko Kiniko. Naira is now going to bounce back. It will never bounce back. That's not how things are done. They continue to borrow money. They are going to borrow over 30 trillion Naira. That's going to be about maybe 30 billion dollars. And they are going to print money. All of these are going to go down the drains. And they're going to tell you, eh, there is now train that is uh, running through Kano to Lagos. About what train, worry. This is what they give back to them. After all, they borrowed money, they loaned the debt, and as well as uh, the hyperinflation. Monk Padabo, when that man said he should be removed, sounds good. This is 2024, right? And this video on your screen eh, was recorded yesterday, just for the optics, okay? Now, Nigeria trained from Kano to Lagos BDs in 2024. Ha! And you are there waiting for them to do what? In another 24 years, ladies and gentlemen, eh? Now, so you go to hold your back. Wait for me. Oh, I cannot jump this. Oh, which kind thing be this? At your old age, waiting for Nigeria to work, you will be jumping into trains like this. I'm not cursing you. Just look around you. Whatever they've told you, whatever they are telling you, this is 2024. Lagos to Kano. Unreal. So I let Rick exit exiting me now. That's the kind of uh train that you are going to enter eh? and you would have to uh, call your family members and say hello I just wanted to let you know that uh, we are about to leave Kano now to Lagos but just in case if we don't make it uh, to Lagos right I have uh, this so-so amount of uh, money somewhere and I'm going uh, so 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 person as well and the other one, uh, you know what I mean? Like, you begin to tell your people, because that's the kind of train that uh, even the bandits, uh, energized bandits, can run after it. If you get to, there's a particular place when you are traveling to northern Nigeria, or you are traveling down, right? I think it's somewhere around the Niger, that same place, right? And Omo, there is this hilly climb that the train, locomotive, will have to struggle to climb. People usually travel by train to northern Nigeria. They will understand. They will remember this part. I've never been, but I have read about it. <laughs> so you can tell me, okay? So they said that when they get to that particular spot, the, the, I mean, before they get to that particular spot, like two or three kilometers before that spot, that Ely, right? 
the train will now increase its speed because it has to climb it with speed or else it will get to a point eh? Now the train will do reverse by itself. Tell me, how many of you have been to uh, northern Nigeria or if you have been to southern Nigeria on the on the train? Eh? You know what I mean? Like, train feel rolled back. You go to pray, see your mom. And everybody go to do, go on, go on. You can do it. You can do it. And it will be like, ah, 